My second guest on the show this evening is one with a jack of many faces, just like they say jack of many trades, who doubles as a comedian, a TV host as well as a journalist. Born Kazungo Emmanuel Ndeya. So many names, but known popularly to you and me as Ken Dumbo. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest, uh, Mulitiani. Titi mm? Buino, uh, it's a privilege to be mm. You see, when you're with people that you've always looked up to and then you, are finally, uh, you finally have an opportunity for them to interview you, ah, I've made it in life and <laughs> it's an honor to be here. Yeah, the, pleasure, so. the pleasure is all mine. Um, I love the fact that you're very immaculately dressed, the tie, the pocket square, uh, very fantastic. Um, before we get into, into the entertainment business, um, from the research that was given through the producers, uh, I'm told you have a huge passion uh, for issues of uh, social and, and gender inequality and just literally social injustice. What, 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 what has given you the passion to drive that agenda? Okay, so uh, I think growing up, mm. I worked with uh, quite You're a You're still growing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, tika likukula, <laughs> koma, <laughs> uh, at least itafikako somewhere. Uh -huh. uh, so I worked with a number of organizations uh, that exposed me to all these issues. I worked with Child Fund Zambia. I worked with Pride Health Organization. I, help, I worked with uh, um, an organization, AYGC, uh, which o uh, obviously has conferences on issues of governance and everything. And I think my exposure to all these things made me feel, okay, I think I can use uh, whatever God has blessed me with in terms of talent and the voice to speak out on a number of issues that affect uh, people. And uh, growing up from uh, a compound in Kafue, Solobon, looked at the things that would happen, how young people would expose themselves to uh, various activities mm -hmm. that endanger their lives, looked at, you know, how our politicians will come to us, beg for our votes, and then go, they go for good. I, I, I felt now that at least I'm exposed mm -hmm. and I've had an opportunity to go into school, learn about journalism and all these things. I feel like it's not just about myself anymore. It's also about speaking out for people out there. And I think that's why most of the times I, I come out on, on, on all these issues because I feel like I have the influence and I have the platforms from which I can actually use uh, uh, myself to speak at, about those things. So your childhood passion was obviously journalism. Yes. Um, and you, you've trained, you're a trained journalist well, for that. How did comedy come really into play? Because most journalists that I know, like myself, are not really funny people. Oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't know I was I was a funny guy, but uh, the the are you funny, by the way? I I think I am because <laughs> most of the times when I'm around people, you find that even when I'm 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 I'm, I'm serious about uh, something, people end up laughing. I I had a very bad experience in in college where sometimes even if I was genuinely asking a question, the lecturer is taking us through a topic and then he says anybody with a question and I raise my hand before I could speak. People were laughing, and I'm like, what, what, what are they laughing about? Then I realized that, okay, maybe there's something that people see in me, and then I tried to do one or two videos for social media, and to my surprise, they went viral. And before I could realize, I had all these people contacting me for business and everything. So I was like, oh, so I can actually get into this. But uh, basically, I... So it out that I started it uh, I started out when I was in college. Uh, so I used to do radio. I was with Horn FM Radio for some time. And then I went to uh, Pan-African Radio, also did some radio with them. But then I know sometimes, even if you're passionate about something, it's not just about being passionate and then you remain broke. Yeah. So I realized that uh, as much as I was passionate about journalism, as much as I was passionate for radio and TV, you have made the name, but at the end of the day, and you don't have the money to pay. So I realized that uh, uh, I think making a name alone. Mm -mm. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm the firstborn in my family. <laughs> and then uh, I don't know. But it's a what The moment you're done with school, you have graduated uh, in college. So from time to time, you start receiving calls. No. And you've already made a name out there. People know this Ken Doom, but then what next? So what I did is I, I decided to quit radio mm. and start looking for a job. 
And then I tried to look for a job that was going to probably just pay me at the end of the day. But then I realized that uh, whichever media institution, radio station, TV station I went to, most of them would just tell you, okay, uh, we're going to give you uh, maybe six months, mm. uh, no payment. We just want to see how you're probation. going to work. Probation. And then after we are convinced with your works, uh, then we are going to uh, put you on a salary and, uh, and stuff. So for me, again, I was like, mm, and, uh, three years in school. Then I was six mm -hmm. months for mm -hmm. me to start getting paid. Then I was like, okay, this is too much. So I started doing, because I had this following on radio. The time I used to do radio, I had a lot of following. So I had calls, people calling me, ah, no, we've missed you on radio. When are you coming back and stuff? So then I realized, okay, so how do I you know, make those people continue following me? What should I do? Then I realized, okay, so after I did two videos for social media, I realized, that, oh, people now, even those that had forgotten about me, they were like, ah, no, we love that video. I think you, you... So after some time, I realized, okay, maybe if I could just brand myself very well, start doing videos that people can, you know, talk about and stuff, I think this is going to be good for me. And uh, that's how I started. So I started doing videos, not just videos to make people laugh. I, I decided I would, I, would, I would start talking about issues that are affecting people. Then I realized, my first, first, because of the journalism in me, mm. there are certain issues that I could talk about. Then I start receiving calls. Ah, and stuff. So and how would you things. describe your type of comedy or entertainment? Satire, purely stand-up comedy, dialogue, how, oh, it's just a monologue type. How would you describe your, your act? I, I, I call my act, it's comedy that speaks. I, I, I don't know how people are going to, to, to put it out there because um, I'm, I'm part of uh, the, the Comedy Association of, of Zambia. And um, there was some debate at some point where we were told those people that are doing comedy on social media, that's not comedy. Mm. So uh, for me, I, I, I've put myself in a situation where I don't really care how people call it. But as long as I'm able to communicate, because at the end of the day, for me, it's not just about entertaining people. Mm -hmm. It's also about informing and educating people out there. So for me, it's purely speaking to people, uh, adding some humor to it, not being too serious. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. when somebody watches my video, they're like, okay, yeah, this was funny. Or even if it was not funny, but at least this mm -hmm. guy was trying to communicate something. The name Ken Dumbo, I know, comes from <laughs> kids in the compound you know, heckling at you, Dumbo, Dumbo. And, and, and Dumbo, obviously, in, in street sense, means war. But, but, but look at you. I mean, so how do you relate to the fact that you called you by Kenny Dumbo? Uh, okay, so here's some history to it. Mm. Ken is an acronym for my name. Mm. So Kazungo Imano Ndea. Mm. So K-E-N. That's where the Ken comes from. Mm. So the time I used to do radio with Hone FM, I used to call myself Kenster, DJ Kenster. But there was a problem to it because in the comedy industry by then, there was already somebody. K-Star. K-Star. So I remember at some point, maybe this is a confession to K-Star. Nasa inako na, ah. na autograph. People thought I was K-Star. <laughs> <laughs> so they came to me and, ah, K-Star, K-Star. And that time I was, I'd, I'd also just started doing maybe to my videos. So I think mm. people were mistaking K-Star for K-Star. But... We formed an initiative with uh, my co-host because I used to do the breakfast show with a guy called Cass, DJ Cass. He's with Kitu FM now. So we formed an initiative called the Kuna Kwa an initiative where we would meet street kids. So one Sunday, we met these street kids. We were having lunch with them, getting to know them, hearing their stories on the street and stuff. So we decided, let's divide these kids in groups, and then we can just have some interactions with them. So we divided ourselves uh, as leaders of the group. So coincidentally, mm -hmm. yeah. So the other group now was laughing at my group and say, it's a group. Yeah, we group have a mm. So now everybody was, ah, vidumbo, vidumbo, vidumbo. Then one of the kids is like, ah, we but see once vidumbo, but it dava when you yonder. Then someone comes in and says, ah, zambo by that vidumbo boy yonder. Mm. So it started from there, vidumbo boy yonder. I thought it was just for that particular day, but even after that experience. My friends started calling me Dumbo Yonda, and by then I was very slim. So Dumbo Yonda, Dumbo Yonda. Then I realized, since there is this controversy about my name, K-Star, Ken-Star, why, should, why shouldn't I just remove the star and put the Dumbo, since these kids are now calling me Dumbo? So I decided, okay, Ken-Star, I removed the star and put the Dumbo, and then Dumbo. I put Dumbo. You, 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 you are a person who loves reading on on politics i know politicians are also the easiest people to 
to poke fun at and do and do satire. Why the interest in politics, your journalism side, or a political ambition? Soon, <laughs> uh, my ambition, I think it's just the, 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 the passion, you know, for, for the communities. And I'm one person that strongly believes that politics affects everything. Mm. Wherever you go, be it in the church, be it in schools, wherever you go, the decisions are made by politicians. Mm. So I take interest so that I just get to know one or two things. If I have to uh, maybe contact uh, a minister, if I have to contact my councillor, my MP, what are some of the ways I'm going to you know, uh, talk to them? And if they do not give me an opportunity to talk to them, how will I attract the, their attention? And for me, because I've decided to talk about issues that you know, are trending, issues that are affecting people, I obviously have to get to know what is happening mm. on the ground and stuff. Things obviously have changed before. People used to do a lot of, you know, um, cinema, there used to be a lot of theater, stand-up comedy and so on. How has social media changed the game, especially in terms of comedy? Well, uh, COVID-19, for example, mm. people no longer can go for, for shows. People can go to cinemas. But at the end of the day, people need to laugh. They How need do you to make your money then? Okay, so uh, it has been a journey for me. Like I said, I, I started doing my videos in the year 2016. By then, I was just in my final year in college. And then uh, I took it seriously in 2018 um, when I, the company I was working for after school started going down and we were not getting paid and stuff. So before I even started doing this, back home in Kafue, Solobon compound, I was this guy that was known. Like, I would, I would do various activities. Like I said, I used to interact, I used to work for different organizations. I would, I would be involved in advocacy programs. It's Youth Day. Mm -hmm. They'll look at Kandan Kochenjedes, and then mm -hmm. my name would pop up. So I would be director of programs for, for, for events like Youth Day celebrations, World AIDS Day, Child Justice Forum Days, and all those things. And I count all those things uh, privileges mm -hmm. for me. So after uh, I completed school, uh, high school, Actually, in my final grade, my mathematics, uh, mathematics teacher, who is now currently the, the wife to the district commissioner for Kafue, uh, Mrs. Sinkala, had a brother who was getting married. So she comes to me and says, uh, Imano, uh, before Ken Dumbo and everything. Mm. Yeah, so she's like, Imano, I've seen you do emceeing for um, youth days and everything. And my young brother is getting married, and I feel like you can be MC. I'd never... Uh, been an MC for a wedding and stuff, and I did not even know. In fact, I didn't even have the privilege to be on a lineup, and up to <laughs> now, I've never danced on a lineup. Mm. So I was like, Madam, I know I've had these opportunities to MC, but I've never done a wedding. Then she's like, I, I feel like you can do it. Maybe you just need to find out from the people that have done it. Mm. So, lucky enough, uh, during that same period, Sambalung was getting married, and uh, difficulty, Bikula or not difficulty, was a master of ceremony, and I'd, I was invited for that particular wedding by the cousin to Sambalungu. Uh, to go and attend as a guest. So I went there not to eat, not to dance, to just but pay attention mm, to, to what, was uh, what, happening. What, is, what was happening and how the MC was uh, just uh, uh, directing the whole event. Mm. So after I did that particular wedding for my mother, uh, for the brother to, the, uh, to Mrs. Sinkala, who was my mathematics teacher then, I did not know the impact that it had. The following week, I was again approached by a member of our church to say, we are having a wedding and would want, we heard that you were an MC at this wedding, so we want you to be an MC. I'm like, oh, okay, no problem. After that wedding, another wedding came through from Mumbai this time. Now, imagine I was just a, mm. a, 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 a grade 12, grade 12. 12. And like they say, yeah. all the rest you know, yeah. is history. A everything is history. And today, yeah, I'm Ken here. Dumbo is yeah. a household name. Great stuff. And obviously now you're doing a great job with, uh, I don't know why you even call him Braji. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, I'll tell you off camera what we should put there okay. in front of the bra. He tells, <laughs> <laughs> did I just say in front of the bra or the bra? <laughs> he tells me he's getting, uh, he's getting married. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I was asking how many Matevetos, yeah, because I remember married. attending another one. But as we, as, <laughs> as, as, as we conclude, um, since you comment on trending issues, what would Ken Dumbo be saying over the acquittal of, of, of Chitalu Chilofi? <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, if, if, if the courts 
found that there was no case to answer and they needed to acquit him. I mean, he's human. Mm. And if there's no case to answer, why should they proceed with, with, with the case? If he's an innocent man, let him be free. But at the end of the day, uh, justice will still come if there was anything that happened. That's, that's Ken the journalist. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I want the trendy <laughs> side of <laughs> Uh, it, 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 it's hard. You, you see, we are living in a, in, in, a, in a society where most of the times, even for the videos that we do, mm. we, we receive threats. And personally, I've received quite a number of mm. threats. So, you know, my issues, but we always find a way of, uh, you know, talking about it. Uh, so, let's move on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting enough. Yeah. Your good friend in the entertainment circles, she's an actor, obviously she, she's a social media personality. Chichi, she got married just last weekend. When is your wedding? Anatcha Kajudas. Anatcha Kajudas. She's not just a colleague in the media. Uh. We work together at Akwitu FM mm. as well. She's not a wedding. So I'm going to go somewhere else. But I'm going to go back to the camp. I'm going to go back to the camp. But I think it's congratulations to her. Yeah. Uh, she, she's, a, she's a great talent as well. Uh, she's, she's done so much for radio, TV, and uh, it's congratulations for her. Ken Dumbo, thank you so much. Uh, for coming through to Costa's The Other Side. We wish you all the best and uh, uh, we keep on enjoying your talent and uh, all the best. I'm really grateful. Uh, you're doing amazing things as well. And thanks for pro uh, promoting young talent. I got the first ever award mm. from Diamond TV as the best social media comedian for the year 2019. And it's thank you to Diamond TV for that one. Indeed. There you have it. That has been The Other Side for this week. Thank you so much to my two guests, Ken Dumbo, uh, and obviously uh, Honorable Mutoto Kafuaya, who is Transport and Communications Minister as well as a Member of Parliament for Lunte. Till next week, same space, which is Diamond TV 271 on DSTV 110 on Topstar, 99 on Go TV. Remember, the streams are Facebook, Diamond TV, Zambia, the Mingletainment app, as well as the Star Times on TV app. And uh, stay safe, mask up, stay home, and watch the only one channel, which is the home of Z Pop Culture. Till next week, good night. God bless. Today.